good day my fellow Juventini from around the world. Another one from yours truly. First of all, please join our La Panchina Serie A Fantasy League uh, on FantaLiveSerieA.com. Um, I'll put a link in the description below, of course, with the code. I've submitted my team, but maybe I'll do some changes as we get closer to the weekend. Uh, I see my fantasy team for the EPL is already a complete mess. But hey, we're just one week away from yet another crazy Serie A season. <laughs> But tonight we start off with the friendly against Novara. We played it earlier today, this morning. Uh, first of all, guys, let me know what you think about our kits that we use today. To be honest, they are so crazy. I might, I might just end up buying one. The issue I have with them, however, is that I cannot see the number on the back. It's black, it's dark, and I don't see it. Maybe it's just the stream I used today. I don't know. Speaking of stream, Juventus TV is a complete mess. Not the first time I failed to sign in and I ended up missing parts of the game. And it doesn't matter guys how many times I reach out to the support team, they still don't reply. It's like it's a one-way communication. Fix it Juventus, please fix it. Back to Juve Novara, 5-0. But after 5 or 10 minutes, I thought, Mm, well, this is gonna be interesting because our defense looked very, very shaky. But after a while, uh, we got the momentum, we started to control the gameplay and ended up with five goals. Uh, and actually quite a good ones as well. So uh, we started off the game with Wojciech Szczesny in goal, Alexandro on the left wing flank, uh, Quadrado started on the right. In the center of the defense, we had actually three guys. So it was Kelini, Bonucci and Danilo. <laughs> uh, in the middle of the midfield, it was West McKenney alongside Adrian Rabiot. Just in front of them, uh, Aaron Ramsey and all the way up front, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo and Dejan Kulusevski. Um, it looked to me like it was a 3-5-2, but it suddenly became more and more clear that it's going to be a 3-4-1-2. So the one uh, basically was the Aaron Ramsey behind Cristiano and Kulu. 2-0 after goals from Cristiano and Aaron Ramsey. Then we shuffled around and scored three. One from Marco Piazza. Yes, remember that guy. And two from Manolo Portanova, uh, the son of Daniele Portanova. If you culture crazies, <laughs> know this guy. Overall, a good display, nice to see new faces in action, uh, particularly Weston McKennie, Dejan Kulusevski and Luca Pellegrini. Made a positive impression on me. Uh, now here is the thing, where do we go from this? This is the real question. It's clear as day that we are lacking a striker. Uh, Pirlo said it so himself. Douglas Costa joined up in the second half but had more of a roaming role like Dejan Kulusevski had in the first half. Three defenders looks like to be the case with Pirlo and it's an intriguing thought because we know Chiellini and Bonucci well they are looking more comfortable with the three-man defense actually uh, we all remember the Barzagli, Chiellini and Bonucci era so maybe this is something Pirlo is thinking about for the future I don't know McKenny and Rabiot played very well in the midfield and Ronaldo had, uh, of course, the free role to do whatever. But the thing is that there weren't so many meaningless crosses into the box as we became used to from the last season. Every pass seemed to be with the purpose. Cuadrado was, however, still Juan Cuadrado, who slows down the tempo, and that is so, so annoying at times. Arthur played in second half, uh, but did depress, but not because he was bad. No, 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 no. Uh, that was basically because we controlled the game in the final third. So Arthur was merely a distributor of the ball. Did that almost perfectly and maybe a bit insecure at times, but that will come for sure. So I'm excited what Arthur will bring to us for this season. A good, nice display and it's so great to see the new lads getting playing time and actually doing good for us so uh, guys I'm excited I have to say I'm excited of course we're lacking something the defense is shaky uh, going forward of course there is a lot of uh, stuff to work on we're lacking a striker and this is gonna be a tough tough season but guys there is something different already now I can see that as a contrary to the last season I can see that Pirlo has a, 
already now a bit more effect on the team than Maurizio Sarri had the whole last season. The positive effect, of course. And if you saw the game, you saw that Paulo Dybala and Matthijs De Ligt were on the bench, of course injured, so didn't play. And some social media fans started to play with idea. Should we sell Paulo Dybala? Here is what I think. Uh, no! And this is why. His value right now is at its lowest for a while. So if we are to sell him, we, we're not gonna get that much money. And... He's injured, so who's gonna buy an injured player? And he is our key player to connect midfield to attack. Yes, we have Kulusevski, and yes, we have Aaron Ramsey, but still, Paolo Dybala had a great, great season for the team that was absolutely, absolutely in shambles. And you want to get rid of this guy just because we need the plus valence, just because we need the money? Well, guys. What does that say to the younger generation, huh? It doesn't matter how much you give to the club, it doesn't matter how much you love the club, how much you sacrifice and fight to stay at the club. It's all down to money. It's all down to money. Feelings and affections, it's all gone. It's all gone. It's not important anymore. It's all about the money. Is this J-Corp level? This is the J Corp level that I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to think of our club as a loving club, as the club who actually, who actually appreciates the players. But right now, if we're doing this, if you crazies are thinking of doing this, I have no idea. If you sell Dybala, but keeping Cristiano for financial reasons, that doesn't make any sense. If you really need the money, get rid of Cristiano. The wage bill is crazy with him. So get rid of him. Of course, you're not gonna get rid of Cristiano because this is Cristiano and the fanboys will just jump on you. So that's why you don't tweet that. That's why you don't even discuss that. Because you're afraid of the banter. You're afraid of the criticism you will get. But I'll say this. I'm not afraid of it. I'm just saying like, like it is. If you are worrying about the financial status of the club, Get rid of Cristiano. Yes, I know he will, he's bringing the revenue. Uh, his revenue is crazy for the uh, shirt sales and whatnot. But I bet you guys. But if you do this with Dybala, the revenue from his shirt sales also will drop for sure. Because, well, I'm not so sure Kulusevski will generate that much of a revenue for the shirt sales. At least not this season. This is my take on it. My take on it. Please discuss down below what you think about it. Personally, Stay, Dybala, stay. You have a great season ahead of you. I believe that this will be a good season for you. Come back fresh and healthy and we'll see what happens. But right now, the money shouldn't be the motivation to sell him. That's it. Nothing more crazy than that. Um, well, we have some transfer news or rumors, which are crazy. Di Ciglio apparently has an offer from Villarreal and Douglas Costa with a return to Bayern and Thiago <laughs> going the other way from, from Bayern to Juve. That's just some journalists getting bored on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Nothing more. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, as always, um, get ready for the next weekend because some great stuff is coming to this very channel. <laughs> and of course, the watch party for the La Panquina. For Juve Sampdoria, are we ready for the new season, guys?